Hi, it's David here, and this is our new pedal, the XO Variable Crossover. It's not really like anything that we've done before. In fact, it's not really like anything else that's out there. So I thought it would be a good idea to sit down and tell you a bit more about it. Now, this is not so much an effect in itself as a way to harness your other effects and use them in new ways. So in a nutshell, the XO takes the input signal, splits it into high and low frequency bands, and then sends these to two separate send and return loops. So it basically gives you independent access to the top and bottom halves of your signal, which opens up a lot of new possibilities. You can apply different effects to these two halves of the signal at the same time, say a fuzz on the low end and an overdrive on the high end, or maybe two different modulation effects running at different speeds. You can also just use one effects loop at a time, so you might want to restrict the reverb uh, to just the high frequencies or a delay to just the lows. For bass players it's potentially a real game changer. Uh, bass players have been using things like parallel processing, dry blend controls for a lot longer than guitarists. Um, this pedal gives you not only the ability to blend your dry signal back in with the effects you're using, you can also determine what frequencies you want to bring back. So for bass players, for example, wanting to use guitar effects on just the upper part of the signal but keep all their low end, or wanting to apply different processing to the lows and the highs, this is going to make things really easy and really fun. But before I go any further, let me just give you a quick overview of what's going on with the pedal. So here we are. As the name suggests, this pedal revolves around an active crossover. A crossover is basically two filters, one high pass and one low pass, that are set to overlap at a specific frequency. Crossovers are used in PA and hi-fi systems, where you want to just feed one speaker a specific part of the audio signal. So you use a high pass filter to get rid of the low end and send just the highs to the high frequency driver and a low pass filter to get rid of the highs and send just the low end to the woofer. If the crossover is designed correctly, you're not aware of any of this. You just hear the full coherent mix with no peaks and troughs. Now, usually a crossover will be fixed. The really cool thing about the XO is that it lets you actually move the center frequency up and down. So if you turn the crossover frequency clockwise, we move the center frequency up. So just the very highest frequencies are going to one effect send, while the rest of the signal is going to the other. If we turn the crossover frequency knob counterclockwise, we get the opposite. There are some other useful controls here. So the range switch changes the range of this crossover frequency knob. This is designed to give you the most useful control range for either guitar or bass. So with the switch up, best for guitar, the crossover frequency ranges from 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz. With the switch pushed down, it goes from 50 hertz to 600 hertz. And there are two more switches. Phase puts the high and low sends out of phase. So if you're using an effect in one of the effects loops that flips the polarity of the signal, so that the two sides end up out of phase when they're mixed back together, you can push this switch to correct that and put the two sides back in phase. The send flip switch swaps over the signals going to the high and low sends. So say you've plugged in all the effects you want to use, then you decide that maybe you'd rather use these effects on the low band and these effects on the high band. Well, then you can just press the send flip switch to swap them over without having to unplug and repatch everything. The return balance knob lets you adjust the relative levels of the two returns. So when you're applying different effects, you can easily end up making one side louder than the other. So this knob acts like a crossfader when you mix the two returns back together. And the dry blend knob lets you mix in the dry signal taken from before the high and low sends to adjust the overall wet dry mix. So the main input and output are at the bottom of the pedal with the two send and return loops above. An important thing to understand is that with nothing plugged in, the send and return jacks are linked and the signal passes straight through. Used like this, the pedal becomes essentially a tilt EQ, using the return balance to tilt towards the low or the high end. And unlike most tilt EQs, you can also move the center frequency 
the midpoint of that seesaw up and down, which is pretty cool. As soon as you plug a jack into a send or return, that link is broken. You can actually just plug a patch cable into one of the sends to basically mute that band, a bit like turning the return balance all the way to the other side, and then use the pedal as a straight high or low pass filter. The returns don't really care which side they're on. Uh, you could plug this send into this return if you wanted to. You could even actually plug a guitar into one return and a totally different signal into the other, and then use the return balance to mix them together. We've just tried as much as possible to make this a tool that you can use in any way that you like. You don't have to use the returns at all if you don't want to. You can just use the pedal to split the signal and send it to two different amps, for example. Maybe a bass amp to reinforce the bottom end and a guitar amp for the rest of the signal. If you want to, you can even run three amps. You could send the full frequency signal from the main output by turning the dry blend all the way up while sending the highs, the lows, or both to separate amps. But before we get too carried away, why don't I plug in a guitar and some pedals and I'll give you some audio examples. So here's my clean tone. <laughs> And when I switch on the crossover, you should hear no difference. Because both sides are, um, there's no effects on either side of the pedal and everything's coming through normal. If I press the phase switch though, and we flip the phase of one side, you'll hear the, the cancellation um, in the center. And you can hear that move up and down as I move the crossover frequency. Similarly, if I start moving the return balance up and down, you'll hear the tilt EQ effect. So, Let's start adding some effects. So I've got this um, cattle and bread uh, Topanga Spring Reverb pedal here set up on the um, high frequency loop. And you can hear as I move the crossover frequency um, up, the, uh, this reverb will just be getting the very highest frequencies. And as I move it down, this loop's getting more of the signal and this loop's getting less. <laughs> Similarly, I've got a digital um, hall reverb here on the low end. Let's listen to that. So you can hear that's just putting reverb on the lower half of the signal. And as I turn the crossover frequency down, you'll get less and less. I can even go down into the, the bass range so that it's getting basically almost nothing, just, just sort of sub frequencies. And then we can slowly bring it up. getting nearly the whole thing. Now of course we can try both of these together. So we've got a, a sort of lush hall reverb on the bottom and a um, let's remind ourselves what the spring reverb sounds like on the top. And the hall reverb on the bottom. And we can put them together. crossover frequency will obviously change the the relationship the ratio um, of each of those effects and uh, what frequencies they're getting why don't we try uh, some delay so let's switch these off so on the top 
on the um, high frequency loop here, we've got a uh, sort of short, slappy echo. And we can make that just um, apply to the very top of the frequency spectrum. You can kind of hear there how there's a bit less on the low strings than there is on the high strings, just because of the nature of the frequencies they're putting out. Um, and as I, as I bring that crossover frequency down, obviously more and more of the signal's getting fed in and we get a, a fuller slapback sound. Now, of course, I could use the send flip button here if I want to hear what that slapback would sound like on the low band. So I'll press the send flip button and now the low band is getting sent to this loop and the high band is getting sent to this loop. So now you can hear the slapbacks just on the bottom, bottom half of the signal. If I move that down, you can hear just the very lows are getting the slapback there. As I bring it up, more of the signal comes in, but still less of the highs. And now, of course, we can put a second delay on the other side. So there's our slap on the top. Let's try th this um, DOD rubberneck on the low band. So a much slower, darker delay there. Let's try combining the two. a bit of uh, modulation now so on the uh, high frequency band I've got uh, this um, Arion chorus pretty pretty warbly as um, chorus can be sometimes but if we just restrict that to the higher frequencies um, it becomes a bit less uh, sort of seasick and um, a bit a bit more subtle in now and now turning it back up so just the ve just just the very high highest highs I get in the chorus and I've got this um, electric mistress uh, flanger uh, on the low band. Set for quite a slow, sort of washy flange. And again, if we just restrict that to the, to the very lowest frequencies, it's a much subtler effect, subtler effect than if we give it the full, the full bandwidth to play with. So if you want to introduce a bit of movement without having the the um, swishy airplane thing going on, that that's that's one way to use it. Um, let's just try them together, see what happens. <laughs> of course, if we play with rate, we can um, we can fine tune things. <laughs>
what's next? Should we try a bit of drive? Uh, I've got this uh, Earthquaker hoof fuzz on the low band. Let's try just adding some fuzz to the very bottom. <laughs> going to bring the crossover frequency up to um, give uh, give this band a bit more of the signal. And there you can hear the fuzz on the low end and then your, your top stays quite clear. And of course it's 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 um, often very interesting to mix uh, two quite different gain pedals. So if we have this fuzz on the bottom and then um, the designer drive on the top end, just adding a bit of roughness. designer drive less hoof let's, let's try more hoof and less designer drive how about some uh, tremolo Uh, Demeter Tremulator, sort of a Fender Amp style trem on the uh, high frequencies. <laughs> TR2 um, set for something quite slow and choppy on the low frequencies. Interestingly, if we put these two out phase, we effectively are creating a harmonic tremolo, where the two sides are out phase and the the area they both share um, is uh, basically creates a phase cancellation effect. So let's listen to that. So you hear that with the phase switch down, which puts the two sides out of phase, you get a much more sort of washy, phasey effect. With the phase, with both sides in phase, so the phase switches up, it's more of a straight amplitude tremolo. So that's the harmonic trem. That's the straight trem. Now, in all of this, um, of course, we also have a dry blend control here. So say we, we want to set up some crazy um, big reverb and delay. use the 
dry blend to um, basically be a global, um, yeah, dry blend control or or effect level control. <laughs> that's completely dry again. I've plugged in a bass guitar now. I will say up front, I'm not a bass player, but I'll do my best to uh, to show you some of the things you can do with this pedal. So you'll probably want to push the range switch in uh, to move the cross crossover frequency control to, to its lower range, um, which is just a bit more useful for bass. One of the challenges that bass players have is trying to use guitar effects, which tend to cut out um, a lot of low end. So let's listen to this tube screamer. I'll um I'll turn the crossover frequency right down so basically all of the um signal is going to this high band and we'll hear what happens when we switch it on. So that's the dry signal with nothing on. And now we'll switch on the tube screamer. So we've added um, some sort of grit and ag aggression in in um, sort of nasally mid range, but um, we've lost a bit of bass and fullness. So um, let's try moving this crossover frequency up. So we're we're um, we're uh, restricting this band to the slightly higher frequencies and letting the lows come through clean on this side. It's fairly subtle. It can be quite hard to hear, especially if you're not listening through headphones. But it's it's a really um, important thing in a live context to to just reintroduce that solidity down at the down at the bottom. Um, similarly, we can um, start off with this hoof buzz on the low band and gradually introduce that on the low end. both together. And in all of this, you can use a return balance to um, just tweak whether you want to emphasize the low end or, or the mid range. So that's emphasizing the mids. That's emphasizing the lows. When even clean, um, we could use this to to um, adjust the balance between between the the um, lower and the higher accents on the bass. I stress again, I'm not a bass player, so let's turn this down uh, towards the low band, towards the high band. Again, using the crossover frequency, we can decide um, where exactly that separation point is. Mm. 
Let's just try out some effects now that may perhaps um, are not commonly used on bass, particularly because using things like tremolo or reverb on the low end can tend to smear things around a bit and, and, and you lose the solidity of the bass line. So let's try putting some effects just on the top and uh, see how we get on. Now this trem, if we put it on the on the whole signal, our bass line is dropping in and out there, um, and, and uh, it's just going to sound um, odd and inconsistent. So if we just restrict the tremolo to the to the top end, then we still have that solid bass, but we can use some effects on the top. Same goes for reverb, really. Let's try. Well, let's try a bit of reverb and delay. So on the whole signal, just a bit of a mess, really, isn't it? But let's um, let's keep the low end clean and just use this on the top. we can combine two totally different effects if we want to. Let's try um, a bit, bit of chorus on the top. from the bottom. wanted to we could just use the send flip to flip those around so now the chorus will be on the bottom and the fuzz will be on the top so there's just a taste really of, of what you can do with this pedal um, as I think I said before, we've tried as much as possible to, to make it something you can use in, in any way that you that you want to. I mean, there's loads more potential here that I've not even touched on. But hopefully this is enough to give you an idea of, uh, of what's possible with the pedal. So thanks a lot for watching and um, head to our website to find out more. Okay, cheers. Bye. <laughs>